வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் தி பயோமெக்கானிக்கல் அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் த ஜாயிண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த அப்பர் லிம் ஸோ இன் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோஸ் வி லுக் அட் தி ஷோல்டர் ஜாயிண்ட் எல்போ ஜாயிண்ட் எக்ஸெட்ரா ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் த ரிஸ்க் ஜாயிண்ட் தி muscles that span the wrist joint and the movements of the wrist joint so what is the wrist joint so there are these bones in the hand or the proximal bones of the hand are called as the carpal bones we saw this trapezium trapezoid scaphoid lunate hamate etc these eight bones some of these carpal bones form joints with the radius and ulna of the forearm so there are three joints that come into the picture the joint of the radius with the carpal bones are the radio carpal joint the joint of the ulna with the carpal joint or the allo carpal joint and the distal radio ulnar joint remember when we looked at the elbow we looked at the proximal radio ulnar joint here you have the distal joint where the radius and ulna meet once again this is called as the distal radio ulnar joint so this is an ellipsoid joint that means that it will have 2 degrees of freedom So what are the muscles that span and supply the uh, the wrist joint there are actually quite a few we'll be looking at uh, these one by one or at least we'll be looking at the most important ones the first of the extensor muscles is the extensor digitorum muscle it's a superficial muscle and its origin is at the lateral epicondyle of the humerus so it's starting in the upper arm and it inserts on the extensor expansions of digits 2 to 5 that is on the index middle ring little finger it is responsible for the extension of the metacarpophalangeal joint of digits 2 3 4 and 5 are for the index middle ring and little fingers is responsible for the extension turns out that it is also responsible for extension of the wrist it's also a wrist extensor then we move on to extensor digiti minimi this is neither a superficial muscle nor a deep muscle this is an intermediate muscle this also originates in the lateral epicondyle of the humerus the insertion is on the dorsal digital expansion of the little finger it's responsible for extension of the little finger actually for uh, the ex- extension of the mcp joint of index middle ring and little fingers you have the extensor digitorum then you have the extensor digiti minimi whenever a muscle name is followed by minimi that means that it is responsible for that action in the little finger okay so and it turns out that this is also an extensor of the wrist then you have the extensor carpi radialis longus the long extensor carpi radialis so this is a superficial muscle again uh, this is anterior lower one third of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus and the adjacent intramuscular uh, septum so originates in the upper arm and uh, inserts on the dorsal surface of the second metacarpal second metacarpal means responsible for 
movement of the index finger right extension of the is main action is extension of the wrist and abduction of the wrist technically this is called radial deviation of the wrist. The other action partly contributes also to the elbow flexion ok. Then you have extensor carpi radialis brevis this is a superficial muscle this also originates in the lateral epicondyle of the humerus this inserts on the dorsal surface of the basis of second and third metacarpals for the first metacarpal uh, for the second already for the digiti minimi inserts on the little finger and earlier we saw the longest attaches to the index finger this one also attaches to the index and middle finger again res responsible for extension and abduction of the wrist. Then you have extensor pollicis brevis this is a deep muscle this originates in the lower third of the posterior surface of the radius. So, on the radius on the thumb side of the forearm and the lower third of the posterior surface. So, somewhere here is where it originates right and the lower third and the interosseous membrane and it inserts on the proximal phalanx of the thumb. So, there are only two phalanges in the thumb this is the distal phalanx and this is the proximal phalanx at the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb is where it attaches what would be its function. So, when it contracts it is going to do it is going to pull the thumb in this direction right. So, it is going to perform extension of the thumb at the MCP joint and at the CMC joint ok. Then you have extensor carpi ulnaris this is a superficial muscle it originates uh, again on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and the posterior aspect of the ulna on the back side the insertion is on the tubercle on the medial side of the base of the fifth metacarpal fifth metacarpal means near the little finger right what is the function on the medial side so right the function is extension and adduction adduction of the wrist then you have the long muscle abductor pollicis longus it is a deep muscle it originates in the posterior surface of the proximal half of the radius ulna and interosseous membrane it uh, attaches on the radial side of the base of the first metacarpal ok. So, responsible for some movement of the thumb may be able to immediately guess because on the, on the radial side of the first metacarpal then it is responsible for abduction of the thumb and extension of the CMC joint the first CMC joint. So, it is responsible for that movement radial deviation and flexion of the wrist so that movement. So, now let us discuss the movements of the wrist when I say wrist flexion this is flexion right. Then you have wrist extension like that this is wrist extension. Then what you would normally call in other segments as abduction is called radial deviation right that is deviation towards the radius radial deviation and what you would call as adduction adduction is ulnar deviation ok. So, these are the movements predominant movements of the the wrist joint. So, with this we come to the end of this video. So, in this video we saw what is the wrist joint what are these joints the radiocarpal joint the ulnocarpal joint and the distal radio ulnar joint together constitute the wrist joint. 
various muscles that supply the rest joint and uh, the movements of the rest joint. With this we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention.